Hello, my name is Marcus and this is Motion Graphics and Cheese. This time around we're going to be looking at this simple ball bouncing animation just to grasp the basics of animations in After Effects. And these are tools that you can take with you anywhere else as well. So let's get to it. So let's go down here to the comp timeline and let's click on the little arrow on the red ball and the little arrow on transform and you'll see these are all the basic transforms that you can manipulate to either move things around your screen or actually animate them. As you can see, the position already has an X coordinate or horizontal coordinate and a Y coordinate or vertical coordinate. See, the downside is that when you make a keyframe, it's going to make a keyframe on both axes at once. And it, you can animate a lot of things like this, but in certain situations, it's better to be able to manipulate each dimension for itself. So I'm going to right click on position and go up here to separate dimensions. See now we have X completely for itself and Y completely for itself. This is going to make our life easier. So let's start by just making some keyframes. You create a keyframe by pressing on this little stopwatch right here. And now you can see here we have some keyframes on the timeline. So let's go all the way over to let's say, yeah, here someplace. And place those keyframes again so that we are sure that whatever we do over here, we're going to land at the exact same position when we reach this point in time. So let's start by making just the bounce keyframe or just the bounce animation. And let's just move a few keyframes over here. So if you want to make a new keyframe in the timeline, you can click on this little bit of a square between those two arrows and I will create a keyframe for you. Okay. So if you go here between those two keyframes, we just created, and let's say it bounces that high approximately. Let's do the exact same thing over here. Create a keyframe. Go in the middle of those two keyframes. And now make that even higher. And we do it a third time. Click keyframe. And another keyframe which is even higher than before. Okay. And right, I'm just going to take, delete those first keyframes and I'm going to move this entire thing. So now we're just moving up and down, right? It's not really doing much. Plus the animation is linear, as we call it. It doesn't hang in the air. It doesn't actually feel like a ball. It's just moving up and down. So if we click on the position here and then click on this little icon here, which is the graph editor, you can see we can actually see the value change over time. And see now, right now it is literally just almost geometrical. So we want to make these curved. Select all of these keyframes and right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. See now we gain these curves. We can already see in the animation here, every single time it gets close to a keyframe, it's actually slowing down. So now we want to recreate how an actual ball bounces, right? So we start up in the air, which means that it should be slow once it's in the air and once it hits the ground, it's supposed to bounce off quite quickly. So if you go up here to the pen tool, now you can actually move these uh, handles around so that you can adjust them to your liking. So let's uh, do something like this. Let's make it really sharp, which means that when it hits the ground, it is the ground fast and bounces up again really fast. Now you may notice if you just click on a new position, it's going to eliminate the point. You don't want that. So if you hold control and click on it, now you can modify the handles. So now we're just going to extend this, going to make this sharp and uh, move this, make this sharp. All right. We can even add a, an extra little one here, an extra little bounce. Let's just uh, keep in position, go over here, and let's just move this a smidge up into the air. Exact same concept. So now the X position, right? We want it to actually move left, otherwise it's just gonna stand still. So for each bounce, I'm actually gonna increase the amount uh, it moves. So let's start by moving this position here just a smidge. It has to be a very small bounce. Then the next one, because we want to exclude when it's actually in the air, we want only to move it when it lands. So this next one here, we're going to move it a smidge more. And next one here, we're going to move it a m even more, something along these lines. Increase the Y position so it comes up. Maybe it starts a little bit out of frame like this. So right now, some places it hangs in the air a little bit too much, so we can just shorten this. Just select a whole bunch of keyframes and just move them. That's how you retime things, right? Until it looks right to you. A lot of this is trial and error. Even with experience, you still want to 
play around with this and adjust until it feels right and looks right. So let's start by looking at the squash and stretch, right? Because right now it's literally not being affected by hitting things. It's not being affected by velocity. It's not really, it's not reacting to anything whatsoever. And you can do this in many different ways. I've chosen to do it with an effect called PowerPoint, which you will find under effects, distort, and here, power, power pin, sorry. So you can see the cool thing is it's actually following the shape of the ball. So if we go over to the absolute last keyframe, just press the ball there and press U so that you can get all the keyframes. So on the last keyframe, let's just keyframe all of these four here. Now we can press U again, and now these new keyframes appear. So this is the really cool thing. So let's say when it hits here, we want it to squash a little bit. And when things squash down, they also squash to the side because mass doesn't ever disappear or get shrunk. It only displaces or moves in separate places, right? So we want it to actually squash when it hits every single time. We can just paste these four keyframes. Bam. So the higher up it comes from, the more it would squash when it hits the ground. So I'm going to squash this a little bit more in the second keyframe. And in the first one, probably even more. So when it's up in the air, we want the exact opposite. So I'm going to take the original keyframes, copy, and paste. So when it's up in the air, I'm going to stretch it in the Y axis like this and squeeze it in a little bit. Same concept when we reach over here. I'm going to take these new keyframes, copy, paste. So it still looks weird, right? Because it seems to bounce at the wrong times. And that's because right now After Effects is just looking at the previous frame, this one, and going to the next frame. And it's just going to squish together between those two times. We don't want that. We are want it to be stretched when it's moving fast and we want it to be squashed towards the ground when it's hitting the ground. So when it reaches its maximum height, we don't want it to be stretched either. That just looks weird. So we're going to take the original keyframes and paste them there. So it's only when it's moving fast that we're stretching and when it's moving slowly, it decompresses into its normal shape. So same with this place and this place. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like it's it's reacting to velocity and its own inertia. Boing, boing, boing. All right. So you might be thinking, well, this looks a little bit weird. It's stretching upwards. And you're completely right, which is why we're going to press Shift R for rotation. Now we're going to, whoops, I made a keyframe in the wrong place. So we're going to keyframe the rotation every single time it hits the ground. Bam. And bam. And of course, bam. And now, depending on the angle it is traveling, we're going to rotate it. So let's say now it's going to rotate like this. And after we bounce up again and it's stretched, we're going to rotate it in that direction where we're getting close to the next keyframe over here. We're going to rotate it the other direction. So it always feels like it's rotating towards its own motion something along these lines. Right now you may have noticed that the highlight is also rotating with the ball, which is illogical. The highlight should stay the same if the light source doesn't move. So my trick for this in this case is you go up to effects and distort and transform and you place this below the power pin. So the cool thing is, since we've animated the rotation down here, we can actually alt-click on the rotation of the transform, and now pick whip this. Uh, now pick whip this rotation of the transform effect down to the rotation of the layer, and if we multiply by minus one, it is basically going to recreate the exact same rotation that the layer has, but in reverse. So if this is plus 20, this becomes minus 20. And now you can see the highlight on the ball is always pointing in the right direction. So now it seems accurate, right? Drink, drink, drink. And that's the cool thing about transform. The transform effect is applying an extra layer of the exact same properties we already know from the transform on the layer. And plus we can even skew, we can change opacity, we can 
do all manner of things and there's yeah plenty of th things to play around with with the transform effects and if you want it to be more photorealistic or just realistic in general you can press the little motion blur icon down here you can see how it blurs depending on how fast the ball is moving so whenever we hang in the air the slow motion blur whenever it's moving fast there's more motion blur and this gives a lot of fluidity and realism to your animations now a key part of making a really satisfying animation is elements reacting to each other makes it more tactile and more satisfying and gives it that DNS required that we're all seeking. So first we're going to create a floor. So go up here, layer, new, solid. We're going to call this bad boy a floor. Not flowy, but floor. I'm going to make this completely white, uh, maybe some gray actually. Okay, and okay. We're going to place this below the ball. We're going to press, uh, and we're going to go up here to the mask tool, create a big nice rectangle right below where it actually lands. So we can see when it's completely still. We're just gonna move this mask all the way up just to kissing the ball, you know, just kissing the ball. There we go. So set this flow to overlay so that it inherits the colors of the layer behind it. Right now you can barely see a difference. So let's, let's make this a little bit brighter, something like this. There. You may have noticed before that when the ball bounces or gets close to the ground, the ground starts to reveal itself, almost like it's uh, like a shadow or a glow or something. We're going to create this uh, simply by creating another new layer, solid. We're going to call this Alpha React. Bam! Now we're going to come up here to Mask and select the Ellipse tool. Now we're going to click in the middle of the ball, hold Control Shift and Alt down, so that it becomes completely uh, symmetrical and it all scales in from the middle. So something like this. Now we're going to go down to the Mask and increase the Feather. Bam! Now we're going to see that the floor, you're going to set the uh, track mat to alpha mat. See, this way, the glow is only going to appear when it actually gets close to the ground. And now we want this alpha react to pick whip to the red ball, or parent to the red ball, which means that they will follow the ball around. So the next thing is, I also created some mild shock waves for when the ball hit the ground. So the way I did this was, I created another new layer, a solid. We're going to call this shock wave. We're going to make this completely square, 1080 by 1080. Now we're going to pre-compose this layer by either going up to layer, pre-compose, or we're going to just press the shortcut, which is control shift C. I'm going to just going to use the shortcut, control shift C. I'm going to move all attributes and I'm just going to call it shock wave. We already have the ellipse tool mask selected up here, so if you double click on it, see it makes a perfect circle within the composition or actually within the layer. So we're just going to animate this. We're going to make this composition just one duration, a uh, one second duration. Something like this one, zero. We're going to keyframe the expansion at the last point in time. Then we're going to go to the beginning and then take it all the way down, all the way down so it disappears, bam. I'm going to select the last keyframe, I'm going to right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. I'm going to the graph editor, and I'm going to actually expand the influence all the way, so it really slows down at the end. So now I'm going to duplicate this mask, I'm going to set it to subtract. So now nothing's happening because they're perfectly overlaying each other. But if you go to the first keyframe and take it down a little bit further, like 650, now you can see it's actually showing itself again. So let's feather the inner mask a little bit so it has a little bit of a soft fall off. But now at the end, you're going to keep on seeing it. So now we're going to expand the subtract mask a little bit more so it overshoots. So it does something like this. So now we have this shockwave here. Gonna make it a little bit smaller. So now 40. All right, so now we want it to only appear when we actually hit the ground. So here, we would want it to appear right under the ball. Gonna move this layer. Bam. All right, I'm now gonna create a new solid by pressing Control Y. Let's call this Alpha. And I want to make it comp size so that it has the exact same dimensions as my composition. Now on this Alpha layer, I'm gonna apply an effect called Set mates. I'm going to tell it to look at the floor. 
and set the source to effects and masks. So see, now it's only going to show where the floor appears. So let's take our shockwave and alpha mat it with this new alpha. So whatever I do to the floor, or whenever I move the mask of the floor, this alpha is going to update wherever I use it. So once it hits the floor, I want the shockwave to appear. Perfect. I'm just going to duplicate these two layers. And there it hits again. So I'm just going to move the shockwave over here. Duplicates. And maybe even have different scales. So the first one could have 50. The next one could have 40. And the last one could have 30. So depending on how hard the ball hits, the bigger the shockwave is. So me have noticed I also had some small particles before. And that I made by making a new solid, and I call this particles. And press OK. Now we're going to go over here and choose particle, particle systems 2. All right. So this is extremely hectic. We don't want this. So first of all, I'm going to completely shut down the birth rate. Now I'm going to animate when and where it spawns. So let's move the position here, the spawn position. Let's move it over here where the ball bounces. We're going to create a keyframe. And next time it hits, we're going to move it. Now it's auto creating keyframes. So if you press U, you can see it's already creating keyframes. So now we want to generate particles when it hits. So one frame before, I'm going to hit the birth rate stopwatch. I'm going to press U so we can see it. And we're going to go right after it hits and make another keyframe. Now in the middle here, we're going to create a keyframe where it actually spawns particles. So now I can see when it hits, it's spawning a lot of particles. Now this is not the type we want, so I'm first going to hit here on direction. So you can see it only goes in a particular direction. It's a little bit too wide, so I'm going to, I'm going to change the extra so that it narrows the, the direction. And we're going to go to gravity. Let's take this to 0 0.2. Let's go into particle. We don't want it to be a line. We want it to be a motion polygon, something along these lines. Just going to choose some white and some gray, something like this. And obviously, they're living too long. Tick down to 0 0.5. And they're moving too far away, so I'm just going to take resistance all the way up to 1. Resistance is like air resistance, so the particles slow down over time. I want them to have a quick velocity at the beginning and then slow down the further away they get. Something like this. All right, now we have these keyframes and we're glad with them. We just copy, paste, and copy, and paste. Bam. And just like the floor, we want them to inherit the color of the background. So I'm going to set all the shock waves and the particles by holding control down and selecting these layers. I'm going to set their blending mode to overlay. See, now, now they're matching more of the colors that we set at the beginning. I hope you found this useful, and please do tell me if you want another type of basic animation, uh, or if I didn't explain something correctly. Have a cheesy day.